All right, so hi everybody, Coach Kelsey here, and thank you to Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hi, hello everyone. <laughs> thank you for asking me on this. Yes, so Steve has graciously volunteered to let me coach him on his why story. We were talking and it was a challenge for him. It definitely is a challenge for a lot of people. I was just telling Steve that someone posted within the last 30 minutes that they were struggling with their why story. Um, it is a challenge. And I think one of the reasons, Steve, that it can be so challenging is I think we use our brain too much um, and not necessarily our gut, our intuition a little bit. Um, it's almost like we're too um, analytical or critical or clinical about our why story. Um, and it's it's natural because I think it's our own story. So it's harder to ask ourselves questions about it. It's easier when we're talking through it with somebody else, I think, where they ask us questions about it and we have to reflect on those questions. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Um, it's also just so important because the why story, I believe, serves as a foundation for everything in our business going forward. It is the thing that gets us through on hard days, most importantly. So if you're having a struggling day or a client you really wanted to work with said no and isn't going to move forward or something, I mean, we can just have days that are hard. And knowing why, deeply why you got into this business and why you want to do this work, I think is really important, kind of helps keep you focused on those days. Um, it also can be sort of like our North Star or that guiding light, that compass in the vision um, or the vision for our business that, you know, sometimes we can get this grand idea like, oh, should I do that? And if you run it through your why, like, what am I really here to try and do and accomplish with this business? Sometimes it can filter out the ideas that are just going to be a distraction, but also reinforce the ideas that like really truly are in alignment with our why story. Um, yeah. Right. Lastly, it, I think oftentimes points to our ideal client. So it is, it's one of those sort of like indirect benefits of the why story where it often, it's about us, but in that story, when we don't make it about us, it points to a type of person that we want to serve and why we want to serve them and how we can serve them in the journey. So I think it's really a crucial piece of the puzzle. And yet it's also a really challenging piece of the puzzle. So thank you for volunteering to dive in with me and be um, on the hot seat, if you will. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's just get started, Steve, and um, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, not, we're not doing why story stuff right now. Just tell me a little bit about what you did up until now and where you're at in the, with the idea of financial coaching. Um, I was a general manager for a dental laboratory for 30 some years, 34 years, retired about two and a half years ago. Um, and since then I've been looking, just, just looking for something else to do, something to do part-time. Didn't really want to go out and get a part-time job here or there type thing. Wanted something that not necessarily physically challenging, but more mental and something to help people. Um, you know, thought about doing some volunteering and everything. It just wasn't me and stuff. And it came across this about the first of this year. So about eight months ago, nine months ago. And just been dealing, dwelling in this offline, getting all confused with all the stuff that's out there, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, for probably the last four months, I've been really narrowing it down between uh, a couple different systems. Yeah. And uh, I have joined FCA, yeah. uh, self-paced as of last week. Yay, congratulations. And, uh, looking forward to go through this. Uh, my goal is really just to do part-time. Yeah, beautiful. So that's where I'm at right now. Awesome. And where do you live? In Iowa. Iowa. Okay, so we're in Iowa. Want to do it part-time, retired, looking to give back with whatever you're going to do with a, with a job or a part-time position, right? right. Um, through all the years that we, my wife and I, have been accumulating doing this thing, really didn't know what we were doing. Um, we sort of, you know, after retiring, started doing some research and things like that, just how we accumulated this a good retirement for ourselves. That how do we do this, that we got lucked out and got this, and found that really made a lot of money and invested it, put a lot of it away in retirement funds and investing, but we left one part out that I found out. 
mm. was saving mm. as to maximizing your income. Mm. Um, so it was really like very interesting looking back at this, trying to figure out you know, what could we do? What could we have done? I mean, when I started del delving into this and finding out really what we could have done, I'm like, wow. And being a general manager for those years and dealing with people, all age groups, um, high school graduates to people older than me, anywhere from just high school graduates to college people, anything like that, so a wide variety. And didn't realize I was hearing this from them, but they're always complaining about money issues. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the light never went on back then. And when it finally went on now, it's sort of like, wow, I could have helped them back then. Mm -hmm. And so it's really exciting just to start thinking of the possibility of what I can possibly do with this. Yeah. Okay. Just one second. I am taking notes here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you, um, I'm curious what made you sort of go back and question or reverse engineer. Cause I think that's what you did. You kind of looked back and was like, what could we have done differently? Or what could we have done better? How did we get this far? Right? Like we did some things, right? So like what made you decide to go back and reflect on that journey and like really analyze it for yourselves? Um, Basically, about seven years ago, I started working with a financial advisor. Okay. And through the process, obviously, they don't do the budgeting and all that kind of stuff, but we talked about what we need to do and structure some things and so forth, set ourselves up for retirement and so forth. But he also told me, hey, before you can retire, you got to know what you spend per month. I'm like, well, I don't have a clue. <laughs> less than what I earn, less than what we earn, but it's, I don't know. So he put me on, gave me some ideas to go look for a budget or tracking, find out where your money's going. And starting doing that, and it, it just took off. It's just yeah. like, oh, wow, we're spending that much here. We're spending that much. Wait a minute, let's talk about this, you know? And it was just an eye-opening experience. It was just unreal. And I'm like, if I could give that experience to somebody when they're younger, yeah. what could you have done differently? And I'm like, well, if we accumulated what we've got, what would I have accumulated if I would have been aware of this then? Yeah. It just totally, just the mind. And I, I'm curious because you mentioned that, you know, you did fairly good. You said that you lucked out. You sort of lucked out, right? And then you said, well, we made good money over that time. But that you also did save money, right? So do you know why you were able to, Steve, naturally and by luck possibly is what you're saying, but how, how were you able to simply spend less than you were making? Well, we also remember the years when we were first married in our late twenties, early thirties and living paycheck to paycheck, having a credit card, not a lot of credit card, but was not happy being not able to pay off that credit card balance every month. And just, you know, is this like when you think about that, you're like, okay, as I make more money, as I grow in this position, I always thought about make more money, make more money, and things like that. And was fortunate enough that that's what happened for us. But I also kept in mind, hey, don't spend everything. Yes, live a life, go out and have fun, do what you want to do, raise a family and all that. But let's do something to make sure we put away for our retirement. Got it. And really, what we were doing was. You know, your 401ks, your, you know, um, your IRAs, things like that. We were putting away 12, 15% a year and that's all we did yeah. <laughs> and never touched it. Just left yeah. it alone. Good. Good. Um, okay. So let's dive into your why story. Okay. <laughs> this is so where it gets interesting. If you were to, and, and no pressure, I know that this is hard. If you were to tell your why story right now, sort of to a room full of people, I, I want you to try and tell me that story. What do you think it would be? Do you know? Can you just kind of wing it or have you put some thought into it? I know you're a whole solid week into the academy, so you're a pro now, but no, I'm serious. Is there, can you kind of pull something together and just tell me right now what you think it is? My why story right now is I'm looking to work with someone who is, Maybe the light has gone on and said, hey, I want to have my best financial future. I want a better financial future than what I'm experiencing now. Um, a light because I don't want to say this. Someone that says, hey, but I don't know how to do it. 
I need some help. I want some guidance. And obviously a financial planner is not the person that they need to go to because they're going to, you know, they may go there and with the couple of people I've talked to with financial planning, they have a budgeting process, maybe if they really yeah. have to give it to some. Or it's like, they probably either. need both, right? They probably right. need that and a financial coach to help with the budgeting and that kind of thing. Because right, luckily help. you were a self-starter, I would say. So your advisor said, here's some recommendations, go check these out, see what you can come up with sort of thing. And you were able to run with that. You were able to look at things, know what to look at for, you know, after you got stuff entered in. Had, sounds like you had a great relationship with your wife so you guys could communicate when you notice something. You could say, hey, why is this, right? And she didn't want to kill you. So that's good too. So <laughs> like, it sounds like you guys had a lot of things work well for you. Like you say you lucked out, but I would say, you know, you did a lot of things right. Um, and some people, they can go to an advisor and the advisor say that and they're never going to follow through on those steps, right? So they need a coach as well. Cool. Okay. So uh, the light's gone on. They want a better financial future than what they're seeing now for themselves, uh, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know maybe where to start, I think is what you were about to say. You know, they're in credit card debt or they're in bad debt, let's put it that way, whether it's credit card or whatever, student loan or whatever, but they just think that's the way of life. And at this point, it's not the way of life. There's ways to get that paid off, get ahead of that ball, and would like to just provide that education, that assistance, the mindset to change that mind, that mindset that where I'm at right now is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. Those kind of things is what I'm really hoping I can somehow get to. Okay. And why do you think that's important to you to help a person with that? So you had mentioned earlier that you, um, let me just read this really quickly. You were heard people at work complaining about their money issues and you realized looking back that you could have helped them, yes. right? There's and so you didn't. Many, you know, huh? How does that feel, Steve, to know that you could have possibly been helping these people but did not help them or that? It feels now that I know what I know with one week and a few months of researching all kinds of stuff, it's like, it's not that, I don't wanna say it's not that hard, but it's a mindset. You just need to have the conversation with them. And it's like, there's people that were always complaining, I need a raise, I need a raise, I need this. Well, I'm giving you what I can. I can't get you any more money. But I know you're spending everything. I mean, I know you well enough. And looking back, I didn't know it then. Sure. But now I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, I could have helped you do this, this, and this. And that's what's really got me fired up about this is just knowing that there are so many people out there that are, you know, whether they're making whatever, not minimum wage or whatever, but somewhere a decent rate wage up to whatever they might be making. I mean, the industry worked at, I know professionals who are not making a living like they should. Sure. And so there's a wide range of people. What about, um, how, why do, how do you feel, excuse me, about looking back and thinking, God, if we had the epiphany 20 years ago that we had seven years ago or whatever, it, it would look even more different, let's say, right now. Tell me how that, that feels knowing that, that maybe there was either lost time there or you were winging it or that kind of thing. I guess it, more of my response is more to that is, is what could we have put away if we would have been aware of what I know now? Um, you know, you can't go back. That's why, you know, with mindsets, you deal with what happens to, you know, where you're at today and move forward. And I've never been one to really look back that way, but it would have been really very s satisfying to have been able to help people or just suggest things to people back then. But my mindset for us, um, it's just like, okay, that's what we did back then. We survived it. We got on, fortunately, we woke up and fortunately made money and put money away so that we couldn't, you know, we had plenty of it for retirement. And um, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just okay. when you look back and you just like, it's like, oh, I wish I would have known. I wish, you know, really wish I would have known what it, you know, some of this information back then. Um, and just never thought of it. That's the only thing I'd say. Mm-hmm. 
do you think um, if somebody would have said something to you 20 years ago, what do you think your reaction would have been? I, that's one of the things that I struggle with as to, you know, going out to talking to people because they're, if they're not in the right mindset at the time that you say something to them, they're not going to listen. Yeah. No, I mean, if, oh, you mean, okay. Because I was thinking somebody like a financial advisor says something to you 20 years earlier than yeah, that. My, like, would you have been receptive to it? Do you think, or would you have been confused or what do you, any guesses? That's what some thoughts I would have said. I said, well, I, depending on my mindset at the time, yeah. would I have really said, I'm ready to hear this information? Right. And am I really willing to take it on? And, it, I, and I look back at it and I go, I guess it would depend on one, how I would have taken the information and a lot of what that financial advisor would have said to me, how they said it to me. How the delivery for sure. Yeah. Because retirement is so far away. It's so important to know that because I think as coaches, we want to help everybody probably, right? Especially when we first start. And one of the most painful realizations for me over the last 10 years was that, you know, this understanding that you can't help somebody that doesn't want the help, right? And our job is to simply offer our assistance, offer our coaching, offer guidance and say like, hey, I would love to sit down with you and talk with you about that if you're interested and just get put that out there, but we kind of have to be not attached to their response. Does that make sense? Like we can be excited for them and want it for them and be happy for them and think they're cool and want to meet with them and all that kind of stuff. And we can tell them all of those things, but sort of detach from whether or not they believe that for themselves. Definitely. Right? Most definitely. Okay. Um, so I am noticing something and I'm glad we're recording this because I want you to go back and, and watch it for yourself, Steve. Okay. Okay. When I started by asking you like, so tell me about yourself, like, you know, a little bit of your history, that kind of thing. You shared a lot of really great examples and history of your life. And then when I said, okay, tell me your why story, you made it all about the other person. So you said, I want to help somebody who where the light has gone on, help them have a better financial future. They, they say they don't know how to do it. They want a better financial future for themselves. They don't know where to start, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is a very natural inclination to, you know, and again, we want to make it about another person. Of course, at some point we're going to use this for marketing and stuff. But the idea is before we even think about crafting it into some really cool marketing message, that's like the second part, we really just have to be honest with like, why do I really even care to do this? Why do I want to stretch myself outside of my comfort zone? Why am I going to invest in a course? Why am I going to do homework when I'm supposed to be retired, right? Like all these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And just don't worry about it sounding cool or scripting it to sound nice or anything like that. So I'm going to recap for you what I think are some of the really cool things you said that point to, I think your why, the reason I say that I'm going to tell you this to you is because your voice was different. I'm glad you're, this is recorded. I'm going to have you go back okay. and listen. Okay. Listen to your voice when you talk about um, the, you know, you're excited about the possibility. You could have helped them, but when you heard them complaining, but you didn't, your voice sounds much more compassionate at that time. Then when I said, tell me why you want to do this. And you started talking about, I want to help someone where the light has gone on. I want, they want to have a better financial future. It was passionate. Don't get me wrong. It was, I could tell that you were being very honest and, um, uh, what's the word genuine, but it also felt like it was the right thing to say. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. All right. So what I am going to just kind of recap a couple of like main points. Okay. So you are retired now and in your retirement, you were really looking for something that you could do to help people or give back in some way. Right. Sure. That you 
when you were thinking about this time of your life seven years ago or 10 years ago, and this is where I would not put a timeline on it when I tell the story. So this is where when we craft it, I wouldn't put a timeline on it because whenever you quantify something in your why story, what happens is people are looking for ways to say that example doesn't apply to them. This happens with money. So if you say, I paid off $60,000 in debt, somebody with $20,000 in debt says, oh, well, my problem's not big enough for them to help with. A person with $100,000 in debt says, oh, I'm too far gone for this person to help with. So unless they exactly have 60,000, they think you can't help them, right? Point heard. <laughs> if you started thinking like really consciously, intentionally thought about retirement seven years prior to retirement, and you say seven years, someone who's got 15 years, you really want to help them. You're like, no, this is when I should have started, but they're thinking, oh, I've got time, right? Got it. And another person who's thinking, well, I want to retire in two years, so it, there's no hope for me, right? So what you want to do is you want to say, in the years leading up to this next time of my life, because that is open enough that people can connect with it in whatever way is most relevant to them, not in the example that's most relevant to you. Okay. Make sense? I get okay. It. Yep. So, and we'll worry, we'll kind of finesse all that kind of stuff at another time. But um, so you retired, um, you were looking for a way of giving back during your retirement. You were reflecting or when you started to think about your retirement and the years leading up to it, you really, I, you know, gut check or however you want to word this to add your personality, Steve. But the idea is you really looked at what did I do right? What could I have done better? What do I wish I would have known? And then I would say, you know, and I learned a lot at that time, right? You learned a lot at that time. And you also can remember now all of the people that you've talked to and the employees that came to you being a manager, they came to you sort of like seeking help and you didn't know how to help them. But, you know, looking back, you really wish that you could have in some way, right? Yep. So the one thing, so, and then I think you could say something like, because all of that is true and you're not talking about a specific person yet. Does that make sense? You're simply telling your story, but by telling that story, do you know how many people will absolutely resonate with that and connect with it? Because there's so many people that are like, oh my God, that's, I'm going to do that. I could see myself doing the same thing, or I've been kicking that can down the road a while too, or something like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A couple things that I think are important, um, you know, that you, um, let me just gather my thoughts here really quickly. Um, I don't think the part about that you used to live paycheck to paycheck, I don't think the part about you making decent income, um, I don't think any of that is relevant at this stage of the why story. It's not to say, so a, a why story is kind of, think about it like an accordion, there's some facts you can add to make it longer. And then there's some ways that you can sort of like narrow it down and make it not so long. So I'm imagining like a shorter why story at this point, but things like, you know, I used to live paycheck to paycheck, my wife and I, when we first met or something like that, that's great if you're trying to tell a longer story, but I don't necessarily think it's needed, the embellishment. Okay. Um, so let's see. the idea you don't want to get too much into the how so and i see coaches do this all the time in their why story so you want to say i looked back and i really reflected on or analyzed or whatever word you want to use you know on what i what we did right what we could have done better how we could have made it happen even faster for ourselves or whatever but I wouldn't get into the how, and by the how, I mean, we first looked at a budget and we used this tool, and then we figured out that there's an area where we were overspending, and I said to my wife, how come we're overspending right there? Oh, did you- I lost you? internet for a second, I'm back. That's okay, what, where did I leave off? Where, what was the last thing you heard? Budget. 
Okay. The how of that is like we first, we met with an advisor. He gave us some options for tools to use. I looked at them. Um, I found some areas we maybe were overspending. I talked to my wife. We started cutting back. You know, like all of that is your how, like how you made even faster progress. The problem with telling the how in a why story is that we're, we're trying to succinctly tell our story, right? Like we're not trying to make this a long drawn out thing. And when we are succinct with the how, what we do is we oversimplify it. We make it sound easy. Well, all I did was look at the numbers. And then all I did was look at this one category and saw I was overspending. And then all I had to do was go talk to my wife and see it like was all better, right? That's kind of what it sounds like when we tell it in a very quick way. Oh, shoot. Steve. Hello, hello. Bummer. Shucks a Rooney. I'm wishing there was something I could do. We're going to give it a minute here. All right. And we've got Steve back. Of course, internet goes out while we're doing this, right? Of course. Uh, hey, business 101, roll with the punches, right? Right. It'll happen with a client at some point too, Steve, just so you know. And you know what you do? You just hurry up and pick up the phone and do the rest of the session on the phone. That's what you do, okay? There you go. Thank you. Good lesson. Because <laughs> it will happen, I promise. Okay. So what I was talking about was how simply due to trying to be succinct when we tell our story, we actually downplay how hard those steps actually are and we make them sound so easy, right? So I was saying like, oh, well, I just went to this, you know, website and then I plugged in my numbers and I looked at it and I quickly and easily saw that I was, oh, we were overspending in a couple of areas and I went and talked to my wife about it and she was okay with it too. And we started making changes, right? Like it just sounds and I'm, of course, embellishing that a little bit. It doesn't sound just like that. But if we're not careful, what it does is it actually makes it as if, well, then why, if they can just do it themselves, why would they hire us, right? Mm -hmm. And what we want to also try and do is create a little bit of intrigue. So like you saying, I looked back over my working years and asked myself, like, what did we do right? What could we have done better? All of that. And what I saw was remarkable or what I saw was so eye-opening or something. If I'm listening to you, I want to know what did you find, right? I don't want you to tell me what you found, you know, because if you tell me, it takes away the, the intrigue, the curiosity. Yeah. I want, I should be, become a client in order to get those secrets from you, those strategies, okay? So um, you look back over that and you also reflect so you you looked back you discovered what you could have done better you had some epiphanies you learned some strategies that like you wish you would have employed sooner or whatever the case may be and during that reflection you also thought about all of the people that had come to you your employees people who looked up to you right as the manager and asking for things like raises and all of that, understanding that the root cause of needing a raise is that they were probably struggling financially for any number of reasons. And you didn't help them. And now you really wish that you would have, right? So mm -hmm. from there, that is a very easy pivot then to, so now I am excited about the possibility of helping people. And I'm excited about helping people learn earlier than I did what I've now learned after looking back on it. And then you said, and I love this, and I think it's your personality. You said it perfectly, Steve. You said, you got to look forward. You can't be looking back, right? Mm -hmm. and that's just kind of like been your style of life is I think the way you said it so along those lines, right? right? Mm -hmm. That needs to go in your story. Because you want the client who is like, understands you're not going to beat them up for the mistakes that they made in the past. You are the type that's going to look forward and put new strategies in place. That's what I gained from that is like looking to you as a coach. I now know something about the style of your coaching. Okay. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. That's the way I've always done it throughout the life. Yes. 
Yeah. So, um, and then you can start to say, so now I'm excited to help people who X, Y, and Z, which is like the more, um, the part you were talking about, you know, they want a better future for themselves. They just don't know how to do it. That kind of thing. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a couple of things that I, I want to touch on is the emotional storytelling that I want you to kind of have throughout. So this might be uh, something that takes practice. So when I asked you, I asked you a few times, like, and how, how did you feel when this happened or when that happened? And it was hard for you to say how that felt. So when you look back and you have people that really needed your help and you didn't help them, how, how does it feel knowing that, right? I want you to just reflect on that, Steve. Like, I think about in the academy, you're not at this lesson yet, but when, it, when we get to sales, there were a lot of people over the years that I was so bad at selling my services to people and like talking about my coaching that I would just avoid the sales conversation altogether. I just wouldn't have it, okay? And the result of that is that I know today there are people who needed more coaching from me. They needed more help to get the results that they were after. And because I shied away from inviting them into coaching, I know they didn't get the help they needed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it, it's one of those mm -hmm. like gut punches, like, oh, I'm like, but that fuels me. Like that's why I now show up more confidently and why I tell myself I'm gonna get better at this and like all those things because of that. And I don't want to put words in your mouth that you have to feel regret or that you should feel disappointed or kind of sad or like, oh, bummer, I missed out on helping these people. I'm not trying to insert any emotion for you. But if you have any emotions in any of these, store, these uh, components of your story, I want you to bring them out when you tell the story. Okay, all Does right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, And yep. so what happens, and if you embody the emotion when you're telling the story, it's, they actually will pick up on it, even if you don't say, I was sad that I wasn't able to help when I look back now and I didn't help those people. You don't even need to come out and say it necessarily. But if when you're telling it, you sort of remember what that feels like, your voice will naturally change your change. body language will naturally change. And in that moment, they will be able to pick up on those feelings too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Tell me what some of your takeaways are right now around your why story. Like, how are you feeling right now? Are you overwhelmed, confused? Is it getting more clear, more confident? Give me an idea. The things I've learned just listening to what you're saying as to how it pertains to myself specifically, I'm going, I've heard your why story several times through videos and all that. And I'm like, yeah, that's what she does. That's what she says. She doesn't say all this other stuff. And I'm like, why is it so hard to see that? And not that <laughs> the story, but until you really delve down into the nitty gritties of saying, okay, here's what I'm saying now, but this is really what, I should be saying it's like, yeah. yeah. Now that's not, that doesn't make it any easier to do the next step with the why story. Sure. Of like but puts me on a narrower path. Yes. Puts me on a narrower path. I know one of your concerns was that it you felt like it it was mine's super profound, I guess. People consider my why story profound, which kind of blows my mind because I didn't know that. So and you were worried that yours didn't seem deep enough. Do you feel like this story from you know, leading up to retirement and deciding I'm going to look and I'm going to reflect on this and, you know, that whole thing that we just kind of mapped out. Does it feel deeper for you? Does it feel more relevant? Just tell me what you think compared to what you thought beforehand. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight. Why is that? Because I'm going to be thinking about this and be waking up all night long saying, okay, here's another word. You know, I'm going to be having my notepad right next to my bed because I'm going to wake up and write something down. It was just, it's Good. just mind opening. It, it's the only thing I can say. It's just like, okay, let's think about this. Let's go through it and all this whole thing. And it's just, it's like, okay, I've got that step down. I, not down, but I know where I want to go with it. Good. It really has 
very helpful. Yes. Good. So I think from here, some next steps for you. I'm so glad to hear that because I think that that's kind of, you know, our stories don't need to be profound. They just need to be real, right? Because people are attracted to realness, right? Mm -hmm. What people are feeling in the moment, our ideal clients are not always like, they're not having an epiphany in that moment, right? What they're trying, what we're trying to do is connect with them. And some big grand story is not going to connect with everybody, right? Like we just want to have a real, honest, truthful, em emotional, but really just where we're aware of the emotions at the time. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so next steps, a couple of things. Obviously watch this video a few times, this recording. <laughs> right. <laughs> How soon will I get it? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, I, I, what I would probably do is almost like outline it. So like here, almost like chapters of the story. You know what I mean? So how, you know, we, I kind of feel like we just lucked out and I really wanted to look back and ask myself why, what did we do well? What did we not? You know, that whole, just kind of map it out a little bit, outline. I would make a separate list if it were me of, Details that we talked about that we think aren't going in the why story, but they are part of your journey because that's that accordion. You might want to pull from them sometimes. Does that okay. make sense? And it's easy yep. to kind of plant them someplace, like just mm -hmm. kind of set them aside. Fills in that story where you need it to be. Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay. I would, the outline, I would ask yourself, like, what did I feel when I was going through that part of this chapter? So when I was, um, reflecting on all the things I did, right. The things that, that I missed or messed up on in my life or that kind of thing. Like, what did you feel in that moment? And I would maybe journal out like a couple of words that describe how you felt when you were actually doing those steps. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Makes a lot of sense. Because when you tell that part of the story, I want you to try and embody those emotions at that time. So if you kind of have those thought through, it makes it easier. Then the next thing is probably the hardest part, which is you have to practice telling it over and over and over and over and over again. And when you do that, you'll find things that sound good and things that don't sound good. And I think one of the best things you can do is tell, tell the story a few times to someone that gets you, like your wife right? She I have gets, a daughter. <laughs> and your daughter, yeah. A good friend or something like that. They know you better than anybody. I, I always say that Michael, my husband, was my business partner from day one, even though we had nothing to do with the business early on. <laughs> and the reason for that is because he understood me. He understood why I wanted to do the work, what made me tick, like all that kind of stuff. And so he would give me feedback sometimes, not because he understood the technical part of what I was trying to do, just because he understood my motives behind it. So they can usually give some good insight and we feel like more our natural selves when we're telling the story, when we're talking to somebody that knows us and we love them and they love us kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Honest feedback, yep, yep. Yeah, um, and they will also, they can usually tell too, like if we're trying to be too scripted about it or yeah, but you would never say it that way. Like it's usually the kind of feedback you're gonna get. Like I've never heard you use that word in your whole life and I've been married for, to you for X number of years, right? <laughs> right. Because when mm -hmm. it comes to crafting the story, it's important to craft it in a way, in an intentional way, but not in a fake way. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes a big difference when you hear somebody and it's fake, you know it's fake. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and then the one part that might be hard for your why story, I, I would expect that this might be a, a moment that catches you sometimes, and it's your pivot point. You have a pivot, and I have a pivot in my story, and I some coaches in the academy have a pivot as well, and it catches me up, so I'm gonna tell you what it is and how to kind of work through it. A pivot is when you change your emotion from maybe like somber or sad or hard, or this was a challenging time and you're embodying that emotion when you're telling it. And then all of a sudden you want to pivot and you want to end in an uplifting way. So like now I'm going to go towards, I'm excited about the possibilities and I'm excited about the people I can help and all of that. And if it can be, it can feel awkward when you're going from like one to the other. 
Does that make okay. sense? Mm -hmm. My pivot story is when I'm talking about my mom and I truly imagine her face sometimes. And like when I tell my why story, sometimes I like really tear up thinking about it, you know? And then I have to go from that to like, and so now I help people and you know, like that whole like, and it feels like, whoo, I gotta like bring myself out of it sometimes. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What I have- I think that's what makes your story so real. Is that probably that point? Good. Because you go from there and all of a sudden you just jump very positive. You're just like, you're caught up. Yeah, I got to sign up. Right. And the idea is you don't want to keep people low. Like you don't, you can't, that's not where people are not going to make decisions from there. If they're feeling, def if they, when you are defeated, because there's a part of your story where you're just like, I don't know, or you maybe not defeated. My mom was very defeated. Yours is more, um, you were just sort of like, I'm imagining like just guessing, right? Like I don't, I'm going to take this action and I don't really know why. I don't really know if it's going to do me any good. It's, I don't know the right word for that. I don't know if that makes sense, Steve. If there's a word that sounds. Yeah. Um, I know where you're going and I'm not, I'm stuck also, but I understand what you're saying. It's sort of like you're, you're going through the motions, but you really were just hoping for the best. You like really didn't know what it was going to get you or if it was going to do you any good or like that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Which mm -hmm. I don't know the word for that, but there is a word I'm sure that describes it. When we post this video, everybody will comment and tell us what it is. <laughs> but um, I think that's so important to embody in that moment because do you know how many people feel that way about their money right now? That like, they're just going through the motions. They don't really know if what they're trying is even going to stick. They don't even know what they should try first, like that kind of thing. That's, mm -hmm. you kept moving forward, thank God. But I would imagine that at some point you were kind of just doing it and you were like, I don't really know if it's going to do me any good. And like, you could have actually just as easily just stopped too. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want you to bring that emotion out at that time, because I think that's who you're going to attract by doing that. Okay. Here. And then you'll want to pivot to like, like I said, more positive. Sometimes what helps me in the pivot is I will sometimes when I'm telling my why story, just come out and say, Ooh, that is still really hard for me to think about sometimes. Oh, okay. I, I just draw attention to the, the moment and I kind of just take a deep breath and then I kind of move on from there, but I give it that pause so that no one else in the room is sort of like startled by the sudden pivot. Okay. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. It gives them a time for pause. What's... Exactly, exactly. And you could do the same thing. It actually gives them a moment to like kind of reflect on how they're feeling too in that mm -hmm. moment. Like, ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. I was feeling like, I was feeling her mom in that moment or something, right? So for okay. you, you could say like, Ooh, I, I still think, thank God I didn't quit or thank God I didn't. And you don't have to say God if you don't want to, it just depends. But like, you know, Ooh, I'm so grateful that I kept taking one step forward during that time to get better at this or something like that. Whatever you kind of want to, it's kind of like putting a punctuation mark right there. And then we're going to move on to a new paragraph almost. If you, we, if we were writing this out, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's almost like this, a, new, a new heading for the next chapter or something. Right. Okay. Could you, do you see what I mean about the pivot? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, how does this sound? So then you're just going to keep practicing it and it'll get better and better and you'll say it wrong sometimes. I promise. <laughs> oh Yeah. But does yeah. it sound like a why story that you can feel proud of? Yes. A lot better than when I was thinking about it all day today. <laughs> Were you nervous because, for this call? Oh, nervous? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I filled out all those forms from lesson one and all that up to through the why story. I'm like, I don't need those. <laughs> I mean, you do, but I don't need them for this call. And I'm like, I haven't even looked at them yet. Yeah. But it's just the rehearsing, you know. Um, fortunately for me, before I went into general management, I was in sales. Yeah. And I remember the days I got into sales. My wife remembers those days of me practicing my pitch, my story, whatever, on her. 
So that's why I might have to go to my daughter because my wife would probably tell me, no, I'm not going back through that. I'm not doing this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And yeah. I do think, you know, recording yourself and then going back and watching it is really helpful, but also just having somebody be an active listener. So that asking you questions back or pulling out what you sort of brush over as like inconsequential. And I'm saying, no, I think that's a really great point. Like that's a meaningful, because we, I can, like when I was asking those questions at the beginning, what I was mostly listening for, I was writing down the details, but I was actually listening for your voice and your body language. So go back and sort of watch some of those um, characteristics. Cause you might notice there are times where you just kind of like, even just a little bit of your shoulders, like it felt like an easier thing to say than a harder thing to say. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and those I think are the, like the important parts of the why story that we don't always observe about ourselves. Okay. Sound good? Sure. Sounds very good. Very Thank good. Thank you for taking me up on this offer to uh, <laughs> volunteer and be my, uh, my hot seat coach for today. It was very enjoyable. It was very great to have this time again, meeting you, learning a little bit more about you and just the whole process. It's just, it's, I'm so excited about where this is possibly going to go, even though, yes, it's going to be part-time for me and whatever. It's not a career big change, but I just the help that we I can possibly do if it's two or three people a month, I you know, it doesn't yeah. matter to me. So yeah. I think the coolest thing about financial coaching, well, there's a lot of cool things, I think, but one of the <laughs> coolest things is that you can do it part-time. You can do it one client at a time. You can do, you know, have a team of coaches under you and everything in between. You can do it in person or virtual. Like you, it really does afford so many options, which is really cool. Those options sometimes can be overwhelming or make it so it's hard to decide. There's no right way. You know what I mean? Right. So that can be challenging, but um, how many people do you think while you were a manager came to you and or we're complaining about money if you had to if you had to guess a number dozens hundreds what would you guess well we had about 50 employees okay and i would say and then some turnover and everything like that i would probably say out of that over the 20 years as a manager 30 40 okay that for that small exposure yes I would, this is totally not the purpose of this coaching call, so you can, you can disregard this if you want, but I would, let's say it's 40, I would come up with a cool tracker or something on your wall for every client you help, you do something, right? So you, oh. to get to 40. So it's kind of like, I've helped the people that I didn't help back then kind of thing. It's just sort of like a fun target, you know what I mean? Because honestly, the first... 10, 20 clients are the hardest. It's, they're hard. You know, we're learning so much ourselves and we're trying to help them learn at the same time. So it's, it can be challenging. It's so challenging. That number 30 or 40, give yourself that target. And I, think I like that idea. A fun little, uh, a little goal or vision for yourself. Yeah. I like that idea. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Steve. And uh, I'll send you this recording and as soon as it buffers. So just give me probably later okay. tonight. Okay, no problem. Okay, thanks. Steve. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.